Really excited here to dive into your recent paper, uh, Preparing for Natural Male Bodybuilding Competitions. So maybe you can set the stage here and let us know, you know, who were the study participants and you know, how long was the prep phase that these bodybuilders are typically enduring? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, we were examining natural bodybuilders, so I think it's important just to identify that they were drug-free bodybuilders competing in drug-tested competitions. Uh, so they were male bodybuilders, experienced bodybuilders. They participated in at least one competition prior to uh, this competition that they were prepping for, and, and we recruited them over the course of a few years. We recruited these bodybuilders during their preparatory phase for a, uh, a competition. So we followed them for a, a five-month period. The first measurement time point, they came in four months prior to their primary show. So a lot of these guys were competing in multiple shows during a season, so uh, provincial shows leading up to a national competition. Uh, so we targeted their primary competition, which was typically a national or even an international competition for a couple of the bodybuilders. And as I said, we got them in four months out from from that show. Uh, some of them were starting their, what we would call their in-season phase, where they start to manipulate their diet to lose fat mass at that 16-week mark. Others had, had already started that in-season cutting period. Um, and as I said, we followed them for five months. So the four months leading up to competition, we had them in a few times. So four months out, two months out, and then the week before competition. And then we got them in again four weeks after the competition just to see how they're recovering, how their diet and physique is changing after the competition. Uh, so in terms of the preparatory phase, as I said, we followed them for four months. Some of them were starting there in season at that four-month mark. Others had started a little bit earlier, and there was a bit of variability with that. One of the participants actually started about 39 weeks out from competition, wow. whereas others were starting at that 16-week mark. So certainly a bit of variability there, and I think that somewhat reflects the results that we found uh, in terms of what measures we took. We looked at body composition, DEXA scanning. Uh, we did bioelectrical impedance to look at total body water, um, anthropometry, so just surface anthropometry there, and then resting metabolic rate. We took some blood samples to look at hormone levels. And then we took about a couple of other measures that we haven't actually published yet. So gut, took, we collected some stool samples that we're looking at at the moment for, for gut microbiota, as well as some psychology measurements. Yeah. And so, you know, if we talk about that prep phase in terms of the, when you first started observing the, the bodybuilder 16 weeks out, in terms of the guys who were presenting perhaps leaner than some other athletes were, was there any differences there in terms of how it all played out in the end? Uh, not really. I, I, we had a small sample size, which was a little bit disappointing. They were actually, it was quite difficult to recruit from this population. We thought we'd be having guys running through the door, knocking the door down to get involved, but unfortunately it didn't work out that way. I guess that's research. Uh, so we, we had nine bodybuilders complete the study, and uh, I think four of them had started their dieting before the 16-week mark. And when we looked at the changes over that 16-week period, there wasn't really any identifiable difference between those who were already dieting and those starting at the 16-week mark. Uh, some of them ended up losing a little bit more lean mass, but then there were others that ended up gaining lean mass in that 16-week period, and, and that's talking specifically the guys who were already a little bit leaner uh, coming into the contest prep, or at least our, our uh, assessment period. Um, I guess generally speaking, and this is what the evidence would suggest, not just in bodybuilders but other population groups, those who are a little bit leaner when they're coming in do tend to lose a lower percentage of fat mass of their overall overall body mass that they lose, For sure. but as I said, there were some that actually ended up gaining some lean mass in that sixteen week period. Um, if if we looked at the the dietary data, uh, possibly things like a less aggressive approach to their their weight loss, given that they're already quite lean, they don't really need to go into such a, an aggressive energy deficit in order to achieve a very low percentage body fat. So potentially that lower energy deficit meant they're less prone to reductions in lean mass uh, as opposed to guys who are you know, looking to lose five or six kilos in a 16-week in a period, probably going to increase their aerobic work to try and increase energy expenditure, but also reduce their energy intake to a greater degree in order to produce a larger energy deficit and hence lose more fat mass. Unfortunately, uh, a side effect of that is there's probably going to be a greater proportion of lean mass lost. Yeah, that's definitely something that um, I had Dr. Eric Helms on last year, and he commented that you know, many of the elite bodybuilders are using much longer prep periods now, you know, up to sort of 26 weeks, which you know, half a year is definitely a commitment. And of course, that, as you mentioned, helping to minimize the lean, uh, you know, losses in lean mass. Um, in your opinion, you know, from a 16-week prep to a 26-week prep, is that 
really just based on an athlete's competitive schedule, maybe how elite they are, training age, or even personal preference? Or what factors are at play there? Uh, I, I think it's a lot of different things. A lot of it would come down to their, their training age and experience. Some of the guys were quite experienced that we that we had coming in here, and I think those guys who are more experienced typically know what works well for them. They've probably tried a lot of different strategies over the years, and they've come to a point where they can understand what works best for them. Uh, also, a lot of these guys had coaches, and, and they're very much driven by what the coaches are suggesting that they do. Uh, so some coaches do have this approach whereby they, they – suggest a longer competition preparation time under the guise that that potentially will limit loss of lean mass. Uh, I think there are other things involved as well. 26 weeks, as you said, you know, that's half a year to be focusing on on cutting down and reducing fat mass. It is quite psych- psychologically stressful um, to stay committed for that long period of time. Some individuals just can't handle that type of long preparation phase and then they, they need to be cutting it down to say a four, four months, so 16 weeks, even a 12 week preparation phase. So yeah, there are a number of different factors involved there. Some individuals, some bodybuilders tend to not put on so much fat mass in their off season. And they use that strategically because they feel if they don't put on as much fat mass, then obviously they don't, they don't need to lose as much fat mass when they go back into their cutting period. Therefore, they don't need to be cutting for such a long period of time. Whereas other bodybuilders, they tend to inflate. They really blow out a little bit, particularly in the sort of the four to 12 weeks after a competition. And then any fat mass that they gain, if they look to compete again, they need to lose that fat mass. So I think there, there are some pretty key points there that determine – the type of duration of an in-season preparation. Uh, as I did mention before, a few of these guys are competing multiple times in their in-season period. So, you know, if you're looking at competing at a local show and then a provincial show and then the nationals, that may be, say, a four-week period where they're looking to be peaking. Um, and if you're going to be doing that at this sort of peak week preparation a number of times, then you need to factor that into your total in-season duration. So that may end up meaning you, you push back from that primary national competition, you, you're extending a 16-week prep out to a 20-week or even a 22-week preparation in order to be looking good for your first show, but obviously looking your best at that international or national competition where you're, you're really looking to, to, to be at that peak status. Yeah, it's definitely um, a bit of the art of the practice, I imagine, with, with timing all of that and getting that down in terms of um, the build-up to it. And of course, at the outset of your study, like a lot of folks, you'd expect to see a loss of lean mass in some of these groups, but they were actually quite quite good at keeping the lean mass on, which is perhaps not surprising among the elite bodybuilders. So is that a function of, of the protein intake in the group or what other contributing factors were supporting that? Yeah, I think uh, there aren't too many studies out there in bodybuilders at the moment. There are a few case studies which have come out in the last few years, and they certainly would suggest that uh, overall the, the portion of mass loss, there, there is a significant portion of lean mass and some of those those numbers vary in up to, to four or five kilograms of lean mass loss in a nine to 10 kilogram total body mass loss, which isn't ideal at all given bodybuilders are not just, they're, they're judged not just on their, how lean they are, but also how muscular they are. Um, I think certainly the protein intake is one of the key components. We know from other research that when you're in an energy deficit, trying to increase your protein intake to, to a higher threshold does seem to, uh, I guess, ameliorate any potential loss of lean mass. Uh, what numbers they should be looking at, there's a bit of variability out there. I know Eric Helms has published a paper which is suggesting something along the lines of 3.2 grams per kilogram of lean mass, uh, something along those lines, which is when you look at total body mass, it's about 2.6 grams per kilogram of total body mass. Um, that's just from observational data. There's no as far as I'm aware, I don't, there's no randomized controlled trial, at least with, with bodybuilding athletes that's looked at different protein prescriptions to see how that affects uh, loss of lean mass. But certainly the evidence would show that when you're in that energy deficit, particularly a, long, a prolonged energy deficit, that maintaining protein intake at a higher, a higher level does help reduce the loss of lean mass or at least uh, prevent excessive loss of lean mass. I think with, with the bodybuilders we had, when you look at the numbers, they, over at that 16-week period, they didn't actually lose a whole lot of weight, um, both body mass but also fat mass. On average, it was about a three and a half kilo loss of fat mass. So that says really they're already quite lean at that 16 uh, that 16 week mark prior to competition, which sure. probably reflects how they approach their their competition in, I guess, from a long term approach. They're trying to prevent excessive gains in fat mass 
thereby they don't need to lose as much fat mass as I suggested before. So coming in fairly lean already means they don't need to lose as much fat mass, which means they don't need to go into such a significant energy deficit. And then you couple that with that higher protein intake, it does seem to be uh, very helpful in preventing the loss of lean mass. On average, these guys were consuming about three grams per kilogram of body weight, of, so three grams of protein per kilogram per kilogram of body weight. Uh, and that would uh, meet the recommendations based on previous research, but also that Eric Helms, what he's recommending with uh, based on lean body mass. So I think based on our lean body mass through DEXA scanning, they're, they're coming in about 3.5, 3.6 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass on average, these participants that we had. So I think certainly that higher protein intake was be very beneficial in uh, preventing a loss of lean mass in these guys. When you compare it to those case studies that have been published, uh, those case studies, the participants are coming in at a much higher percentage body fat, which therefore means they need to lose a lot more fat mass. And uh, all the evidence would suggest that when you need to lose a lot of weight, when you need to lose a lot of fat mass and you're quite aggressive with your, with your energy deficit, then inevitably there's going to be some loss of lean mass. And that's what those case studies would reflect. And I think that is reflected by the data that we've collected here.